Millions of words are written every year about the gods and goddesses that inhabit our modern Olympus, Hollywood, California. Now, most of these words are muttered by disappointed writers and embittered actors. So we feel very fortunate in having secured the services of a good man, a plodding student, S.J. Perelman, who has been to Hollywood and come back and is still insolvent, but not bitter. Maybe I should say that the opinions expressed on this program about love and motherhood, especially motherhood, are strictly those of Mr. Perelman, but they are enthusiastically endorsed by NBC and Omnibus. Well, I guess that puts us in the clear. Well, anyway, uh, Act One, Malice in Wonderland. This is Bridgeport. These are palms. This is Hollywood. Bridgeport with palms. The fabulous fabled city of illusion. In an orange grove on the sun-kissed shores of the Pacific, where once only the lizard blinked among the yucca palms, there stands today a city of dreams, a metropolis where alchemists imprison beauty on film. Who has not longed to bathe in its broad, majestic rivers that fertilize the alluvial plain? Who has not yearned to kneel at its architectural shrines, the very epitome of frozen music? Its academies of higher learning, where the intellect is king. Its soothing vistas invite the weary traveler. Mecca to millions, its unspoiled natives in their colorful tribal costumes dazzle the eye, inflame the senses. Unsparing of its largesse, the brains and sinews of Hollywood toil ceaselessly to enrich our folk ways, to spread a mulch of culture across the land. This, then, is the setting of our story, the story of a pilgrim who went there on an errand and of what happened to him. But to begin it properly, we must first go to another city, an entire continent away, to New York, and there specifically to a building tenanted by practitioners in maladies of the mind and of the soul. Why, Sherman Worms, are you old skin flint? I haven't seen you for weeks. Where have you been keeping yourself? With my nose to the grindstone, just as you have, I guess. Oh, yes, I've been working the clock around. I have a couple of very interesting cases I'd like to talk to you about someday. Distortion syndrome of the superego and a yachtsman who keeps setting fire to his mother. Love to hear about them. How's Beryl? Wonderful. Couldn't be happier. Nothing like a new bride to keep a man on his toes, I always say. Tell me, how's Formica and the children? Quite stable, thanks. Ah, wonderful. But I'm in a bit of a quandary, though. Yes, I've had a rather attractive offer from a movie studio in Hollywood. They're looking for a psychiatrist to be technical advisor on a new psychological thriller called Befuddled. They want to work out a couple of dream sequences. That sounds wonderful. Oh, oh, I wouldn't go out there with those crackpots. From what I hear, everybody loses his sense of proportion. Well, uh, I wouldn't mind losing a little of mine if the fee was right. <laughs> <laughs> Say, look here, yeah. Randy. Why don't you go out there in my place? You know the nightmare feel as well as I do, and it might be a nice honeymoon for you and Beryl. No, no, I'm afraid I can't. I have a persecution case at the moment that I just cannot leave. Well, just keep it in mind, just in case Beryl ever needs a new make, huh? <laughs> I, I Here's mud in your ear, old boy. <laughs> this must be terribly tiresome for you, Doctor. It seems all I do is smoke, talk, and cry. Now, now, Mrs. Trefoil. Let's take everything in sequence from the very moment that you and your husband arrived in Hollywood. Try and remember everything that ever happened to you, all the details that you can. Well, <clears throat> Hamish and I were nearly exhausted by the time we got there. All those last few days in New York were a hideous strain. His agent dickering with Metro and subletting our flat. And Hamish hated to leave the studio. Your apartment. The actor's studio that nursery of so many of your top draw mummers. So we were pooped when we got to the coast. One of the first things we did when we got some energy was to climb into our Hertz rent-a-car 
and take a nice leisurely spin on the freeway. One glorious day, we went up to the Griffith Park Observatory, that landmark which it is the mecca for all travelers to Pacific shores. We stood there and reflected on how suddenly it had all happened. One minute, you're just an obscure cipher, playing a wastrel in an off-Broadway production of Ibsen's The Wild Duck. And the next, you're Rance Gantry, the new Western Five. <laughs> oh, Hamish, it's just like a fairy tale. Uh, except that it's real. <laughs> Look, uh, Kitten, you will remember about my new name, won't you? You know, at the uh, studio, they'll be calling me Rance. Short for Rancy. <laughs> oh, I get a kick out of that gray old Pacific stretching out to all those romantic places. Pango, Pango, Catalina. Oh, oh, darling, that's not the ocean. That's the smog over Burbank. The ocean's over there. And someday you and I are going to visit all those places. You bet. Of course, first of all, I got to get established around here, learn my way around. My, you're learning fast. Oh, he's off smart of those switch-tailed heifers don't appeal to this cowpoke. I'm just a very lucky Joe starting a seven-year contract with option. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, dears. I was just teasing you. But there, there is something that bothers me. Uh, what's that? That dinky one-room apartment we live in. I feel so cooped up there all day long while you're away at the studio being creative. Well, why don't you be like all the other wives? Go to UCLA? Take a course in ceramics, get your teeth capped or something. Well, I joined the circulating library and the Zen Buddhist chapter, but that doesn't fill up the whole day, and I can feel the walls closing in on me when I sit there. Mm, gee, honey, we can't afford a big ranch at this stage. Oh, of course not. But can't we just have a wee bitty place of our own where I could make you pizzas and you could study your scripts and practice on your guitar? Like those Kodachromes of Hugh O'Brien and TV Guy. That's right. A, a, a sort of Pennsylvania Dutch farmhouse, only Western. Uh, houses cost money. Oh. Oh, Hamish. I mean, Rance. Can't we just scout around and see what's available? <laughs> How can an old rat pack pat rat like <laughs> I refuse a pretty young school mom? <laughs> <laughs> Better be right off, honey. That old smog's beginning to roll in. In other words, Mrs. Trefoil, fundamentally, you were jealous of your husband's career, and you wanted to dominate him domestically. That's right. So we started house hunting, and right away we found what we wanted. A sweet Cape Cod salt box on stilts in Laurel Canyon. But that fizzled out when the owner asked Rance's profession. Why should that make any dividends? Um, I mean, difference. The woman said that the last actor she rented to barbecued a fish in her silver tea tray. She chased Rance and me out with a broom. A broom? That's right. That woman is very sick. Well, we were terribly frustrated, but then just as I was in despair, our dream house discovered us. Well, we don't sell real estate here at Hitchcraft and Smedley, folks. We sell goodwill. <laughs> Well, that hits me where I live, hombre, out where I hail from. My Lord, love you children, the minute you opened that door and walked through it, I sized you up as my kind of people. <laughs> and right over here, through the marvel of electronics, we can select from among thousands of listings the very home that suits your distinct and individual personality. Uh, do you have anything with real character? I mean, that isn't showy or expensive. My dear, you just watched me translate your fondest dream into reality. Let me see now, attractive... Aryan couple. Uh, I'm Scotch Irish for three generations back. My great grandpappy fought with Davy Crockett. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> no children, you say, and uh, no pets, uh, hobbies. Oh, we belong to the Book of the Month Club. Oh, uh, intellectuals. Mm -hmm. Now, you just watch that screen right over there. I'm your story book house. I hate to brag, but I know you'll love me when you see me. I am an English farmhouse, artistic rustic, situated on a hillside in a lovely secluded spot in Sherman Oaks. Be truly blessed. <laughs> 
luxuriate on my patio and hark to the strains of the giant carol on it nearby UCLA as it plays Smoke Gets in Your Eyes. I'm a peaceful, comfortable, inspirational hideaway. Rent me and I'll come to you. Thank you. 